Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to the Score Esports Podcast. I am your host, as per usual. Well, I guess that's not true lately. Colin McNeil in the booth with me. We've got Daniel Rosen, who's become more of a regular than I have. Hello. And, uh, of course, behind the boards, the return of the Mac, by which I mean Josh Burry. Wow. Emergency emergency replacement host Joshua Burry. For sure, for sure. In, in, in case of emergency, break Josh away from his desk <laughs> yes. and uh, put him in Break the, the shackles to keep him chained to this mortal plane. Yes, through victory, my chains are broken. Okay, so. we're already Speaking getting victory, the Sith though. code. Speaking of victory, uh, if you haven't already clued in by Dan Shirt, today we're going to be talking about fighting games. We don't get to do that as, as much as we would like on this podcast, so I'm super excited to say that today our guest is none other than the EVO 2018 champion of Street Fighter V, Problem X. You may know him as Benjamin Simon, and we got him on the line. Let's just bring him on, Josh. Let's just do it. Hello, Problem X. Thanks for joining us. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for making time with us. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you on. We are a little bit late after your Evo win. We apologize for that. It's It's been so long. You've even won another event in between Evo and now. <laughs> yeah, um, just came back from the Celtic Throwdown uh, yesterday, uh, which is the ranking event. Um, yeah, so... It's, it's all going well right now. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, no kidding. That's, you, a, that's a two-year streak holding Celtic Throwdown for you, right? Like, that's two years in a row you won that? Yeah, it's two years in a row, but I think I've won it, like, three three times now. Hmm. Yeah. And that gives uh, CPT points, right? Yep, ranking tournament. Yeah, and you and you need yes. those. You definitely <laughs> need those. <laughs> yeah, you're being the Evo champ. <laughs> I actually need them for regionals. Oh, yeah, oh. I forgot because of the seeding. Okay, very true, very true. Now, problem next, speaking of Evo, um, yeah. you are obviously the reigning champ. And I want to ask you, after winning the pinnacle of sort of fighting game competition, I think it's fair to say, do you feel any different? Do you walk around with a sparkle? Is the psycho power coursing <laughs> through your veins right now? Uh, well, I feel that when I go to tournaments, I can totally throw that. Obviously, because of the points that you gain from Evo, um, I was already, I'm already qualified for Capcom Cup now. I, I, I think I would like to think so. So, um, <laughs> so when I'm playing in other events amongst people who are still battling for qualification, I clearly have a significant advantage. So it, it helps to play with less stress, and therefore you can actually play better. Which is, you know, I found winning Celtic Throwdown, I was much less stressed than when I won the Head Stomper the week before Evo. Mm -hmm. So, um. Yeah, and it's still still sinking in because, you know, it's Evo. You know, I've been watching Evo for years, and I've been going there for about three, four years. Last year, Evo, I came 193rd, so it's definitely still sinking in. Our, when you, well, I guess, when you go to events now or when you hang out with people among the FGC, is there a different feeling? Like, do people maybe sort of have a reverence for you, or, like, have you been asked for autographs? How's, how's that go? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get asked. I, I was asked for like a few pictures here and there and a few signatures like prior to winning Evo, but now it's just like it's kind of insane. It's like everyone, even people that I haven't even seen at events before, in quite a few numbers asking for pictures and saying congratulations. And yeah, so it's still, I'm still receiving a lot from it. Do you feel like the buzz is still going? Like, are you still riding on cloud nine after that? After oh, that yeah, win? definitely. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Because it's not just, it's the fact that I won Evo, but it's also the fact that, you know, nobody from UK has ever won Evo for Street Fighter. We won Evo as Europeans when Luffy won it in Street Fighter 4, which was, a, uh, I think it was 2013 or 14, I can't remember. 2014, I believe. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And um, But for UK... We've never won Evo for Street Fighter for Europe. We've never won Evo for Street Fighter Five. Um, so there's so many benchmarks and, and new new uh, records that have been broken. So I think I'm receiving a lot of that as well as the Evo win itself as well. Do you obviously, like you mentioned, but do you, do you feel that kind of regional pride for being the first UK player to win a Street Fighter tournament at Evo? I think Reinhardt won Tekken a couple times, but that that's it for the UK at Evo. So does it feel like that regional pride to to finally bring home a trophy for I think the for UK in general at Evo first time in like a decade for Street Fighter first time ever? Yeah, like for UK it's first time ever for Street Fighter. We never won at Evo as far as I'm aware. 
Um, and also, it's yeah, I mean, I feel a lot of regional pride for that. I feel a lot of uh, pride for the people that, you know, that are in my closer, my closer circle who have helped make these victories possible. Like, you know, like the constant weeklies and, you know, the winner stays on sessions and support from friends, family, girlfriend, everyone who's more closely knitted to me is even bigger because they know they know more of the level of commitment that I put in more so than uh, people from the region because everyone's competing from the region. But I feel it from everyone. Yeah, it's great. You know, a lot of people kind of, I think a, a, oh, a narrative that kind of came out this year, right, is that like, or before Evo and, and kind of leading up was that Europe was like behind and people were always talking about Japan and North America. And I feel like that's always the case in Street Fighter that, that Europe kind of gets shafted a little bit. But obviously, you know, you won. Luffy also made top eight. Do you feel like that, like nobody can make that argument? Like, has that narrative finally flipped? Like, can people stop going there? Well, I mean, we'd like to think so. I thought after Luffy won Evo and other European players put in good performances. I mean, Luffy got Capcom Cup top eight. Um, at one of them, the Street Fighter 4 ones. Uh, Ryan Hart did quite well in one of them. I thought we would have, you know, Phenom got grand finals at E-League. You know, I thought we'd already done enough to not be scratched off. But I think now, you know, the Evo win, it's a big one. It's like, okay, within the space of four years, we've had two European Evo champions for Street Fighter, which is arguably the biggest game at Evo, I'm not saying it's, you know, the best or whatever, because everyone's game is, is good personally to them. But it's in terms of numbers, I think Dragon Ball may have pinched the numbers, but in general, over the years, Street Fighter is usually like the main event of Evo. It was still the main event this year. So um, that is also big as well. It's like one of the big, the biggest game. And even though you guys have an E-League and Capcom Cup champion, you don't have a Street Fighter champion in terms of America. I know you guys are, I think you're Canadian based, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We but, are indeed. Yeah. yeah. Try um, Rithy, get on that. We don't, we, I believe we don't actually have a major <laughs> champion. I don't know if Air ever won anything in Street Fighter 4, but I, I don't believe we have a premier champion either, unfortunately. So uh, we're, we're out yeah. in the cold. <laughs> yeah, the North American region, let's say, don't have um, an Evo champion mm -hmm. yet for Street Fighter. So, yeah, Europe, you have to pay attention to Europe now. <laughs> It's yeah. I feel like that's the um, it, it it is the running the running theme, right? Like, and I never performs. I mean, there's always a North American in top eight, but we never do any. We never like get past that. And I think we had Cool Kid this year who who did spectacularly, but obviously you and Luffy there next to all the the East Asian players matters. You know, it, it matters more when you win, I guess. But you got grand finals last year of Punk. That's that was true. Close. That's true. That but, was close. But uh, Punk is not gonna make Capcom Cup this year, so. No, nah, I think you. Uh, there's still regionals and a few events. You never know. I mean, I started my last year. I had like a hundred points or something. I started my and then I won like four in a row in September. Hmm. So he might start. He might have the same burst. That's true. You never, never know. Never too late. The yeah. So I I, I do want to. Uh, I know we we want to take you back to Evo and relive that a little bit. But before I do, yeah. I wanted to ask you about your mentality going forward because you've won the biggest thing in Street yes. Fighter V. Is it the case where you, is it demotivational? Do you feel like you're like, I won fucking Evo. Like, I'm going <laughs> to chill now? Or is it basically like, well, listen, Tokido was in the grand finals of like everything after he won Evo, so I got to do the same thing. Uh, well, after I came back from Evo, I was completely tired. The, just like, eh, my whole, uh, I couldn't even make it to Cologne. There was a ranking event, like, on the week that I returned, uh, the ranking event in Germany, I'd actually signed up and everything. I just couldn't, couldn't go. I was too tired. And I wanted to, you know, spend some time with people and rest. But I was back. I was here to go throw down. So I'm still in the grind. I'm still coming. I want Capcom Cup. I want to win that. Um, no one's ever done Evo Capcom Cup same year. So I want to be the first. That's the goal. I want to try and, uh, and set that record. And also, um, I know a lot of people are going to be you know, what in the run back, especially Takeda, he does not like losing. <laughs> so um, I want to be ready for, for him. And yeah, I have no, there's no signs of me slowing down or relaxing. I'm trying to pick up all the points I can. I want to set a new record for CPT points and I want to try and win the Capcom Cup. So yeah, I'm not, I won't be slowing down. The very thing is giving me more of a boost. I actually want to just ask, uh, actually, I, I know obviously the event was in a different time zone from where we were, but by the time Street Fighter V Finals rolled around, it was getting a little bit later into the evening. 
Was that for you? Was that did that affect your play at all? Are you comfortable in a situation like that where you kind of have to wait a bit before you can go on stage? Uh, yeah, I mean, we all know FGC time. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, something you get used to, but they had, you know, because of the thrill. I think the excitement and the thrill of what I was competing in and how close I was to, to winning, you know, the adrenaline canceled out anything else. And I had a bunch of water and refreshments in the back as well. So, yeah, it was fine. What was what was kind of obvious? I know I, we were listening to other interviews before we, we came in, and we've we've heard you talk before. But I'm I'm still curious. You know, what was what was your thought process in that moment when you know when Tokido reset the bracket on you? What were you feeling like in that just in that second when that happened? Uh, I was thinking, like, I was like, okay, like my little, you know, um, leverage is gone now, so I can't make any more mistakes at this point. But I realized there was a lot of things that I could take away from what he was doing because one big advantage of winner's bracket is the other guy has to, you know, fight for his life to stay in the tournament. So he's going to pull out everything he has or, you know, there's there's not going to be any sandbagging potentially from the loser, the person who loses bracket because they can't afford to. So I got a lot of genuine information from what he likes to do or the decisions he made in those scenarios. So I still had an advantage. I was just like, let me go back to character select and um, recompose and, and process the information. I, I've always liked the Bison Akuma match. I've always thought it's one that Bison can actually fight quite well. So I wasn't as such nervous. At least, um, you know, I didn't feel there was obviously some nerves, but that's not the feeling that overtook me. It was more like, okay. Now we have to play for real. It was like the first set was almost like a, like you know, you, you get that one for I get that one for free. So now it's like okay, I can't make any more mistakes. It was it was definitely nice seeing you take that break after I think last year everybody was like yelling at Punk to like hey yeah. <laughs> take a second go to character select like give yourself a break like mentally. So it was you know it was nice seeing somebody like actually take that. I'm I'm wondering you you've also talked about how like it was actually crazy because I, I I looked it up after you mentioned that you have never played Tokido until that moment Street Fighter Four Street Fighter Five never right. Yeah, no, I don't recall playing him at all. I played, no, I played him at Street Fighter Five final round, like the first year of the game, like the first, no, the year when Akuma came out, when he was like two weeks old. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I lost with Birdie. I was playing Birdie at that time. Um, but I'd never, ever played him since. And because Akuma was just brand new, I don't really, you know, it's not, you know, <laughs> like, well, you don't know anything. So yeah. uh, in terms of a stable match, I've never played him in tournament. Um yeah, so I was like, okay, we're both going to have... No one has no habits to go by or anything previous, so it's going to be a clean set. So I was excited about that. I really didn't want Fudo in the run back. I didn't want to play Mika again. I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I hate no, no one wants to get mika anywhere, anytime, but <laughs> Evo Grand Final sounds like the worst place to get mika I, I want to ask you if you think that, um, like... I feel like Bison is not a super common character right, right now, just in general, it's especially outside of Europe, where I feel like he's all, like Europe has always kind of been a place where you see some Bison players. Um, yeah. Do you think Tokido was ready for, for Bison? I would say I think he knew the, the generic stuff. Obviously, coming from Japan, there's always, as far as I'm concerned, I assume they always have somebody who's at least of good level for each character. That's just what it's always been. So... Um, I think he had a general base knowledge, but I'm, I would like to say I'm like a, you know, even though I play other characters, I'd say Bison is my character specialist and uh, soon coming Abigail. So I'd say I don't think he's played a character specialist Bison who has a lot of tournament experience um, as much as myself. So I think there were some things he was definitely unfamiliar with, but the general concept of his tactics in the match and his go-to answers for scenarios, I think he knew what they were. Mm -hmm. The comparison has been made uh, just now between your situation and Punk's situation and how completely differently they ended. And I just wanted to get um, your thoughts on maybe where the difference in that comes from. He's obviously a young gun, both in age and experience, and you've had a lot of experience. You, your nerves are, I assume, pretty much steel at this point. <laughs> <laughs> is is that what it comes down to when the murder face like resets the bracket is the difference experience i think that's one of the differences but i also think you have to remember punk throughout that whole season last season he didn't know what it felt like to lose mm. ever he won everything mm. 
up until that. He won every tournament he basically entered. He won the E-League. He won you know, the rankings, the premiers. He was sitting at, you know, a huge amount of points on the leaderboard. And there was this huge, I, there was this huge expectancy put on him for from you know for North American region as well to get this Evo for us. So he had also played long, extensive sets with Takedo prior to Evo. They had been playing, and he had to play him earlier in the winners final. So Takedo had history on Punk on the same in the very same tournament even. And they played lots of sets, etc. So I think that that might have hindered him as well because Takedo being the veteran that he is, if you compare Punk and Takedo, I would assume at this stage, the longer they play, the more it favours Takedo. So they had that, which I never had. Like I said, I've hardly played the guy. So he didn't have any... No, there was, that, that wasn't there. Um, also, I thought I was building up steadily. I mean, I got top eight last Capcom Cup and then top four at E-League. So at Grand Slam events, I was getting closer and closer to winning but I know what the hard loss felt like once again Punk didn't know what that felt like so I worked on little things that can avoid that happening to me as I got closer to the grand finals of EVO so I think losing helped me more and knowing what it's like to lose when you really want to win and when you're so close and not having as much um, matchup history or player history with the person that I'm playing so I think those two things my experience not playing Takedo as much, especially not having to play him earlier in the same tournament, not having this huge expectations uh, expectation to win because Punk was winning everything. He was clearly number one in America. He was, you know, you expected him to be in grand finals based on the form anyway. People don't really expect me to be in grand finals. I think they thought I'd do good, but I don't think they put me in grand finals. So because of that as well, you know, Takedo last year he probably researched punk heavily because he could see the form he was in mm. prior to me winning head stomper the week before evo i wasn't really winning and like i said people just put me in that area of very strong player but i don't think he'll take evo i saw everyone's uh expect uh you know um predictions i wasn't really in them mm-hmm. uh same as e-league i think people that i think probably will do really well but i don't think he'll win and because of that it helped. It works in my favor. So I think those are the things that I had differently to punk at the time. That makes a lot of sense, man. When when you did win um, that that final grand finals round, you took a breath and you very graciously shook Tokido's hand, I believe. Um, and the, there was just a moment, a calm before the storm, a moment before the pop off. And then your your guys uh, <laughs> mobbed the stage and everyone was happy and it was elation. What were your thoughts when you you finally did win? Well, obviously I was hugely relieved that I didn't uh, lose and get so close and have the have the winners bracket advantage and still lose. So I was happy that I managed to see it through. Um, I didn't really process, you know, everything that would come after. I was just happy to be out of the set. I could feel him getting stronger. Even though I won the second set 3-0, he, uh, he was more comfortable. It's just sometimes that's how SF5 goes. You know, you can play really well. So the score isn't a reflection of, of the the match all the time. It's like, oh, I just happened to get the better of these couple situations, which could have went horribly wrong. Mm. So I was happy to finish the set. I've got a huge amount of respect for all the competitors who enter and play this game because you will end up with grey hairs 10 years earlier than what you should. <laughs> um, and I just got a lot of respect for all of that. And I know what the journey is like. Everyone wants to win. So I'm not really about, you know, like pop-offs or jumping about on the stage. You know, I like to show respect to my opponents, especially when it was an excellent set, got the reset, everything. So I was just happy to win, be able to share the same stage as, you know, the other guys that was in the top eight and come out with the victory. Fair enough, fair, fair enough. I think uh, you, if I may say so, like endeared yourself to a lot of people. You know, everyone knows Problem X. We've seen you play. Like you said, we may not have expected you to win EVO, but when you did and the play was so supremely good, supremely confident, and when you did show that kind of respect to Tokido, I feel like even this sort of like named Tokido fanboys were like, damn, that was legit. 
Colin McNeil is a <laughs> Colin McNeil is a name Tokido fanboy. So I wasn't I wasn't gonna say it, but in our best of Evo video, that's what my name key says. Now, Dan, I did interrupt you for that, so I apologize. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I want to ask because you mentioned the thing about you know Street Fighter Five is a game where you're gonna get gray hairs. Uh, a lot of people know that from experience, even just at a, at a low level. I want to ask like people say that Street Fighter Five is hard to be consistent in. You yeah. are a dude who has been, I think, over the last year at the very least. Like, maybe you're not winning all, everything, but you're you're consistently, right? You're top 16, which is hard to be in, I think, consistently in Street Fighter Five. Even Daigo loses to a Vega at some ranking tournament somewhere, right? Like, <laughs> are, is, yeah. it, is it actually a game that's hard to be consistent in, or is it just, like, you got you to gotta approach the game differently? Well, it's hard to consistently win. I don't th – I think um... – once you get to a certain level and you have a certain level of understanding, there is a gap where if the level of understanding is too far between both opponents, it don't really matter what's going on. The other guy will most likely win. Um, but it's because there's so many situations, which is, I guess, so when your knowledge is, you can have the most knowledge in the world. When Mika's got you in the corner with Nadeshko, it don't really, it don't really matter. What, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you studied. you got to guess, you know, so... There's a lot of that in this game. So I think that's where anyone can get got. However, um, it's similar to poker, I'd say. This game is like, you know, I don't know if you guys play poker or know how it works, mm -hmm. but um, there are bad cards. You shouldn't be betting with certain cards, I guess. So um, I think there's a degree of that. But yeah, the game is, I, I, apart from Guy and Manat, I don't think anyone on the game can even zone you successfully. To be honest, and even Gal doesn't win like that, and even does Manat. I don't think the control is very low in this game, so I guess you just, you know, you got to know when to block, when to take stuff. There's not really like escapes. There's more like, you know, I'm gonna take this over this kind of thing. I don't really think there's a, there's not really much you can do to avoid a lot of the situations. So it is a toss up. A lot of tournaments are a toss up, especially when everyone knows their frames and whatever. But yeah, I mean. I guess there's matchups. There's other elements, I guess. Matchups, characters, you know, the unknown element, you know, play styles. Like, someone like Zangief is like, you know, he can just like, he can get you, but you're basically playing roulette like for the entire game. <laughs> um, whereas other characters like Guile, he's much more solid. So um, I'd say he's a consistent character. I think it's, it's based on your character choices mm -hmm. and matchups that you play, which might edge the level of consistency i know you also have um i think we've seen a, a, a couple more people start to pick up other characters you've been playing abby for a while now is it important then to have multiple characters i know abby doesn't necessarily help with guile but um i'd say i think that the character choices are quite essential based on the matchups but it depends who you play if you play the top five you don't need anybody else if you play akuma you don't need anyone else if you play you know, Cammy, I don't think you need anyone else. You know, uh, yeah. Guile, I don't, I don't think you, so what was that? I was, I was just saying you played a Cammy, you don't need anybody, so I just said, yeah, you don't. <laughs> yeah, Cammy, Guile, even Manat has issues because um, she's got no defense. So if somebody does get you in their stuff, you don't have the, 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 the reversal. So you might lose because mm -hmm. you have to actually guess what they're going to do. With uh, Guile, I think reversal is very key. You rarely see, I've never seen anyone really, you see it sometimes, like I do it sometimes, but you hardly see people win tournaments with characters that don't have a reversal mm. and play that only that character, you know, or some kind of deterrent from a type of attack. This is why Bison is really, really hard to consistently win with by himself, I believe, because he's just got absolutely zero on defense. So if somebody does get a jump that you're not ready for or a dash that you don't check, you might get put in their blender and you, you have to guess right. You can't just reverse them. So I think that that's a, a key. You know, people like Fujimura are very consistent. Takedo, Daigo, all the Kami players very consistent, but they all have reversal. So, they, you know, that, I think that's the main thing.
going back uh, to, to Evo again, after you did win that grand finals and there was a celebrations and the commentators had their say, we had gotten used to over the last couple of years, uh, a mic being put in front of the champion's face and hearing whether it be download complete or fighting games or something so great, whatever. And you didn't get that opportunity. And at the time, a lot of people were like, okay, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Why didn't Problem X get to speak? Later, we learned uh, that it was uh, the issue that ESPN was not covering it in the same way they did the last two years. And that was all. Do you think, first of all, that it should going forward be, regardless of ESPN's coverage, it should be uh, an opportunity for the champion to speak to the stream and to the, to the uh, crowd at the arena with a microphone? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that you should. they should allow you to do that, even if it's not on ESPN. You know, um, then it gives something to the people that are there physically and who, who took the time to come out and pay to be at the event. It gives them something as well. And you've just won the biggest tournament of the year. I think you should have, you know, something. You should be able to, to say something, at least. I do think so. So that being said, Benjamin, let's <laughs> just go right back to that moment. Redo it all. I put a microphone in your face. What... <laughs> What do you say? What would you have said? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel that's one of those moments that stuff just comes out based on, you know, whatever comes out will come out. It's like a natural moment. But I definitely would have, after I've thrown out my probably first three sentences, probably wouldn't have even made sense. But <laughs> after that, it would have been, you know, big shout out to the sponsors, Mouth Sports, you know, all the people in the community, especially Matt Edwards from Capcom, you know, letting us play at all the stays on sessions, offline sessions are really essential. Uh, people like Logan, Unequal Media for putting the events together. My girlfriend for allowing me to play this game for numerous amounts of hours. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just um, all the supporters that have stuck by me and wanted me to win, you know, even when I didn't look like I was going to win at some point so yeah but it would have just been like I, I guess I would have I would have came up with some kind of comment I probably would have said something like you know I probably would have popped off <laughs> after I've shaken Tequila's hand gracefully I probably would have said something like I don't know man's not hot you know <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have said a bunch of a bunch of stuff so it might have actually been better for everyone's view of me that I didn't get the mic so, like, no, nah, I'm just playing. Nah, I'd probably have said a lot of stuff. I don't even know. But I definitely would have thanked all those people that, that I've said already. And um, I would have probably said, Capcom, please don't nerf my characters. Yeah. <laughs> I think I yeah. just think it's, it's so cool that we've had that opportunity for the winner to address the community and the crowd and to sort of have that moment to say whatever they want that it was a little bit upsetting that it didn't happen for me mm. because I think like Tokido gave us something so cool last year that I think that I think is going to sort of I think it's going to be around for as long as fighting games are a thing. I, I just Every, such yeah. a cool moment. Everybody just expected it, right? So I think we were all kind of disappointed when they didn't give you the mic. We, we were all hoping for it. I was it. definitely like, waiting for it. Nobody was yeah. like nobody's just like, "Oh, this is going to be really profound." It's just like we just want to hear what people have to say, I think. Mm -hmm. Just in the community, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I also just like the idea that maybe this is like a thing like like it's almost like a weekly or even just a tournament with your friends if you win you get to have the last word <laughs> with everybody on a stream you know no saying? matter what yeah, or no, even just even no but, stream just like that's that's what i'm saying like even if it's just a friend a friendly tournament with friends or it's like a weekly or something like the guy who wins he gets the last word because he's he's earned it you know what i'm saying so for me that's always been a thing I look forward to after the last couple of years, and yeah. Anyways, so I'll, I'll make sure that I don't. Now, I'll so. make sure that you don't get to talk after we play Third Strike, Josh. So, <laughs> oh, no. uh, I wanted well, to ask you a problem. You know, you're you're a guy who used to like used to pay your own way. You were self sponsored for a long time. Like you, you yeah. played under PXP. Like you qualified for I think the Street Fighter 25th anniversary tournament that way, and Capcom Cup that way in Street Fighter 4. Yeah. I want to ask how you feel about the current uh, Pro Tour system. We've talked a lot about points, and it really seemed like the way they restructured things this year, it didn't really benefit, you know, non-sponsored players, players who couldn't travel to a billion events. Do you do you feel yeah. like that's the case? Uh, well, it definitely... I don't know. I don't. I feel like the point system rewards winning events more than 
placing consistently, at least in terms of rankings. In premiers, you can place top eight. At, maybe if you go to like six, seven premiers and place top eight, at least at the moment, it looks like you'll be in Capcom Cup doing that. Um, the ranking events, though, if you can come seventh, you know, it's basically thanks for playing because one point is, uh, especially when you've got other events on at the same time, if you go to a ranking because that's what you can afford and you can't go across seas because, you know, you beautiful North Americans have all the premiers. <laughs> You, if you can't go there and you have to go to a European ranking, for example, even if you do get fifth and get like 10 points, the people who get top 16 at that premier are going to get the same and more than you. So you're, it's just obsolete. Whatever you've done don't matter. There's 16 people ahead of you. Um, but I, what I do like about the tour is I've always thought it's called a Capcom Pro Tour. So it should be, and it should be a tour where you find majority pro players and most pro players are sponsored so if you want to be a part of that you have to get results at your rankings and at the if you want you know those sort of more local tournaments to then get a sponsor i think it's helped create a ladder and the cpt is the platform where the pros play and to get there you have your avenues you know you've got regional finals they've even changed it so somebody from across seas can't come and win your regional finals and qualify that way because in that year one of the Capcom Cup that's what could happen mm -hmm. I remember Daigo came over and won a European regional finals and he qualified as a regional final <laughs> champion from Europe <laughs> so they've definitely catered in some ways to um, both tiers I would say what this tour does do though even as a, a pro player it ensures that you have to go to a lot of events and people have to remember that Capcom Pro Tour, these things are all a business. So they have to make it sustainable for them. Otherwise, you can moan all you want, but then you just won't have a tour. So, um, I like it in some degree. I do think the ranking points could be a little bit more generous to allow top eight to get some kind of, you know, reward, not just completely obsolete if you come seventh. I think they should all move up a tier, the points in the rankings from top eight. Um, but I kind I do like what they've done because it encourages winning, and it ensures that there's a differentiation between a pro player and a player who's, you know, just got a lot of ability to to attend events. I feel like in the previous systems you could attend and just keep getting like top 32, and you may qualify, or you could luck out at one tournament and auto qualify. And I don't believe in that for a tour because that's like, you know, a tour is supposed to be who's done well over the year is who's in the, the, the end of the in the uh, finale at the end. So I quite like it. I just feel like a lot of people, I feel like now compared to the, you know, when I was playing SF4 or during 25th anniversary, things like there's a lot more sponsors now or apparent sponsors now. So I feel like a lot of people, have a higher level of entitlement to sponsorship rather than there being a problem with the tour. Mm -hmm. Speaking of sponsorship, you're obviously now with Mouse Sports. We can see their logo <laughs> on your hat at this very moment. Yes. I, want, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the support that they give you and specifically after you did win Evo, was there, was there any kind of like bonus for you, like a bonus incentive? Like, hey, uh, you <laughs> won your, uh, I hesitate to call it an eSport, your, your event's biggest event. Uh, here's a Mercedes Benz, or here's a Mouse Sports <laughs> brand Ferrari, or something like that. Uh, yeah, there's definitely uh, been a lot of perks from winning. Uh, you know, there's um, been uh, some incentives, um, and obviously you'll get, um, you know, normally people would assume you get higher contract deals or whatnot. Mm. So all that stuff's in the pipeline. But I'm definitely, yes, winning Evo has definitely benefited me. Um, I haven't got a Mercedes-Benz, unfortunately. But, um, Come on, no sports. Maybe if I, if, I, if, I, if I carry on on form, I'm, I should be able to maybe in the future be able to buy one. So that would be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, um, yeah, Evo, I'm still, you know, like I said, still fresh. So yeah. that pressure i'm sure i'll probably be able to have more in depth for you mm -hmm. in a maybe one or two three months time 
but the in terms of like you were talking before about like I, th I think what what we were what, what part of what Colin was 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 getting at was like you were talking before about like what the uh, you know everybody kind of feeling entitled to to need a sponsor and need a sponsor. What what does having that sponsorship give you in in kind of the modern FGC esports structure? Oh, of course, yeah. Having a sponsor is obviously better because you don't you're not spending your own money for one, <laughs> and for two, when you spend your own money to go to events. You, you apply more pressure to yourself because it's your, you know, it's like a lot of people who spend to go to events, they're very expensive. Events can be like to, to, to continue on the tour, to go to enough events on the tour to actually qualify. You're going to, if you're just paying out your own pocket, it's not only the fact it's very costly. It's the fact that if you're working as well, it's, you don't, you need to keep booking holiday and that runs out very fast. So, um, Ideally, even if you get sponsored, you still need to be able to put time in. I feel like I feel like people may overlook sponsorship and time because time is very essential. So you need to ideally the dream is to get to a level where you can afford to play full time. Mm -hmm. And then you can I guess you can reap the benefits of both. But I think without the time, you could have, you know, I don't know let's say Echo Fox or any sponsor sending you, being able to send you to a hundred events. But if, if you don't have the time to compete, like, or to practice enough to, you know, to be on a level to, to, to get the points from those events, all that will happen is, is a company will pump money into you. You'll keep not doing how, as well as you believe you can or what they want from you. And then your sponsorship won't last, I believe. So it's, um, it's the time thing as well. So you have to be willing to put in the time. Uh, so having a sponsor helps you with that. If you're winning and if you're good enough to keep it sustainable. So it's a risky role. I'd say it's almost like a work in a commission job. I'd say mm. when you, to, to begin with, you have to, you know, it's like people who work in sales. If you're, if you work in commission only and you're very good at sales, you'll make a lot of money. I guess if you're, not that good at sales and you go to a commission only job it could be disastrous so i think it's kind of similar to that so it's not it's very hard it is very hard it's not just the sponsor that you need it's time and you need other stuff as well you need to have natural ability at the game not every game you get good with with time i mean i know a lot of people who play for long periods but it's hard for them to improve so there's a lot of factors so it's not just a sponsor and before I got sponsored, I was paying and winning those events that I paid for. So I think that that's a stepping stone. And that is the route that I took. I, maybe it's different now for people. I don't know. There's a lot more sponsors, like I say. When I was playing in Street Fighter 4, it was just Mad Cats and Razor, really. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a, that was all, it was all I knew about. You had others, but they weren't. They just give you a shirt kind of thing. It, it was only, the salary thing is all new now. Mm -hmm. What what advice would you give to a new player now? Like maybe maybe if you if you don't if you're not telling them like hey pay your own way to every event like like you did like what would you tell a, a young player who wants to to you know to be at Capcom Cup? What what path would you tell them to take to to being pro as you put it? Well, I mean the only path I can really give some advice to is the one that I've gone down myself. But I would say uh, you know. First, get play the game. Be able to, you know, you want to be in the online. So get, you know, you want to get in the battle lounges or the lobbies. You want to be dominating in the lobbies first, and then you want to go to your locals, your weeklies, you know, etc. And then you want to be winning those consistently. Then you want to go to your local ranking events, win those. Then go to the ranking events that are in your region that you might need to travel to, which you can afford to if you're, you know, get a part-time job or whatnot, or things that are like a train away. In Europe, sometimes you can get to other countries via a train, so it's different. Mm -hmm. um, work, work your way up rather than, oh, I'm going to put all my money into Evo. Yeah. And you haven't gone, you haven't, you know, you haven't sort of gone through the, the in terms of the level of tournaments and done well there first. Um, yeah, that's what I'd say. I'd say take the time and, and, and slowly step up because then you'll never be in over your head and the pressure that you'll have is only the pressure from the game rather than the pressure from, oh, I've requested this amount from X amount of sponsor 
And, you know, so they're expecting me to deliver this level of result, which I'm not used to delivering because I haven't played in these lesser tournaments beforehand. Sometimes you can get in over your head and then it won't last for long and you can get demoralised and all of that. So I'd say just take your time. You know, a lot of things that you see, you just see the end result on your screen. You don't see the rest of it. So, yeah, I'd say just work up slowly and go through the tournaments, go through the weekly, then the monthly, then the ranking events, then see how you do at the premiers. Etc. Things like that. You don't need to go spam events and want to get. I know everyone wants to go through the tour and everyone wants to play games for a living. It's a you know the dream job, etc. But you can end up um, unhappy, and you know you can lose a lot of money very fast. So I suggest just taking your time. So my uh, my Ed, which is highly unsuccessful in in local play, should not be making the jump to Evo anytime <laughs> soon. Is, is what I'm hearing. Well. <laughs> Well, no, it depends what you go for. If you're go obviously, Evo is a fantastic experience, so you can go. Mm -hmm. But if those who are, exp you know, who want to pursue full time gaming as a, you know, as their career or, you know, like quit what they're currently doing, you know, um, I would say just me anyway. It might be, you know, it's different. Everyone can do what they like, but me as a person, until what's deemed in inverted commas as the lower ranked events, until I'm dominating. I don't want to take the next step up. I wouldn't, like, you know, that's just me. I wouldn't, like, if I'm trying to do it as that. If you're going for recreational purposes, then go to whatever you like because all tournaments are fun. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to actually be a pro player and you want to quit your current day job or whatnot, you have to be in a situation where you believe you can consistently deliver because no company or business likes unreliability. There's definitely uh, there's definitely nothing consistent at all about my Ed play. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> That, that's fair. Listen, I, I didn't go 0-2 at Evo, and that's my greatest achievement of all time. I, um, what I, I wanted to ask that we kind of touched on this a little bit when you're talking about, you know, the larger amount of sponsors and stuff. There is this narrative that kind of gets batted around a lot of sort of like this, this eSports versus FGC talk that I think comes up every time something happens. And, and I want to ask, right, we have a lot of sponsored players, you included. We have even sponsored tournaments, right? Evo had dozens of sponsors. They're announcing games and pro tours for Guilty Gear at it, like... Is is there does that narrative of like esports versus the FGC the two are against each other like is that still there or or can they coexist? I don't I don't really I kind of you know like I kind of I'm I'm a bit out the loop with some of these uh, recent like phrases or whatnot even though I'm on I'll post and stuff on on Twitter and social media so to go I spend most of the time just you know if I'm not doing something in my standard everyday life I'm just practicing or playing the game I don't really keep up with all this uh, stuff. I don't even know what that means. Like, I don't even know what the FGC, what the difference is between FGC and esports. I just know that esports has other games in it. And if you're playing an FGC game, which is part of esports, then it's the same thing. So, I, don't, I don't know anything else. It's totally, totally see, that's See, yeah. that's the opinion of a reasonable man. Yeah, exactly, you know I mean? like, right? Like, <laughs> this is the flame war that goes on on Twitter and everyone's just like, Everybody, reason a lot of reasonable people just like, it, it, like no, I, I don't want to say like people are unreasonable who bring it up, but sure, like, sure. I think there's a lot of people who are just sort of like, I don't know what this is, guys. Let's all calm down and be friends. Um, and I, I definitely understand. Uh, I understand the people who are a little bit grumpy about sometimes some some companies kind of coming in and trying to co-opt the FGC for for profit. But I also understand on the other side, you know, internally in the FGC, people still need to, to make money so the, the we man, can play this full time. The man said himself just a few minutes ago, it's a business too. Yep. People do need to eat food. They need to survive, pay rent. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, yeah. All right, let's well, let's move on to some more fun stuff. Well, then. yeah, <laughs> act, actually, actually, problem, um, as we're like starting to wind down a bit, we've touched a few times on sort of how you how you came up pre mouse sports days and how you paid your way to tournaments and won the tournaments that you paid for. I was wondering if you could share with us an experience. It could be a specific story or just a generalization of those sort of I don't want to put words in your mouth, but those sort of tougher times, the, the, the times when you were slogging it out, paying for events, and then winning them. Yeah, I mean, I um, I remember, because I used to just work in a retail, retail um, when I was young, you know, when I was younger, part-time job retail. And, you know, you get your, you get, obviously you get paid, you pay off whatever you need to. But those times it was just like phone bill. That was usually the only bill those times. Um, and I was going to college. So I'd come back and I'd practice 
for like four or five hours. You know, you'd play, you'd play. Um, well, I just kind of finished. I kind of just like finished college. And I started playing, so, but it was like one of those ones where you had I had like the exams at the end, so you'd revise a bit, and then um, I'd play for a few hours just online. I, was, I actually started off just playing online for Street Fighter Four. I was just playing. I just liked the game, and then someone told me about a tournament called Super Versus Battle, which is uh, local in London. Um, and that was the year Daigo came down. I think it was 2011. I think it came down. I went to, or 2010. He came down. Um, and I went there and I just played in it. I think I just came outside top 32. I lost to Ryan Hart. I didn't know who it was at the time. So it was like, oh, you lost to, you know, you lost to Ryan Hart. I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't know who it was. I was like, oh, that's good, mate. You've done well, like, the first tournament, etc. And, yeah, but that is how, and then I got invited to Winner Stays On, which used to be a weekly um down in um central london but in terms of you know a time when i won the tournament i'd say one of my biggest achievements was the a, a tournament called hype spotting where it was in scotland um the event was going on for quite some time but i paid my own money and i paid late and i got a train ticket so it was very expensive but i wanted to go because it was on the cpt and i'd been practicing practicing and I won that event, and then I got, um, you know, you get your prize money for your ranking event based on the entrance. I think it had um, a small little pop bonus as well. But it was enough for me to then pay for a nut for the other event, which was not out of my working money. So I guess I was a bit up then. I had a bit of profit then. So I used it to pay for that event, and I did okay there. I can't remember what that event was now. And then that's how I sort of started on the tour. And then by that time, I'd got, my, got paid again. And then topped up. So it's like, oh, I can go to this event and it's not costing me that much money because of the prize money I won here. I used to use prize money to pay for tournaments, basically. So, you know, and just practiced a lot. And then it got to a stage where I was almost in to the to the cup. And then I actually got in. And then there's downtime when you from the pro tour from like December when it ends. You usually the tour usually starts right about March. So I'd be working for those three months, saved money in preparation to start the tour again. And then I kind of rinsed and repeated that cycle. And then I won money from the weeklies. Every bit, of, Everything I won, I just put back into the tour for a while. That's just how it was. That's how I done it. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Was there a moment during that time, uh, maybe when you weren't winning what you needed to win to put into the next tournament, a moment where you were you thought to yourself like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> this is like, what am I? I'm playing video games. I'm trying to be a Street Fighter pro. I'm trying to get the Capcom tour. Like, fuck this. Was there was there ever, ever that moment? Uh, I always believed my ability, but yeah, I was getting. There was a there was a year when uh, in Street Fighter Four, when Luffy just kept winning everything. I was like, you know, no one's beating this guy. Like, I'm just losing money here. Like, what's the point? I go to any, any every event. He just kept beating everyone. He just kept losing to uh, Luffy. He just kept destroying everyone in Europe. Or Street Fighter 4, with Rose kept winning everything. So I was like, you know what? This year, I'm not even going to... I skipped a couple of events. I was like, I might as well just save my old money. So I did get a bit despondent for a little while. Um, and then... But I kept playing, just not going to tournaments. But I was still playing, and then I started figuring some things out. And then I started getting a few games. I used to keep going to France. I went to Kaku Top League. There was a few events that I was invited to, which were European. And I'd use those to play, but I yeah I had a, a moment where I just wasn't wasn't that bothered anymore. I was like, look, I can't keep up right now because I got to spend time on work, etc. So you have moments where you drift in and out, I guess, because um, it's not always going to go your way. So yeah, I had those, and yeah, I guess I just went to fewer events, and then some of them w went my way, some didn't. Well, something we've been we've been trying to do more on 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 this show is, is ask people about sort of like their favorite like uh, kind of more like out of out of games. Do you have like a favorite tournament story that wasn't necessarily like a match you played or something like just something crazy that happened at a tournament or something after hours when you're hanging out with people like something kind of kind of weird that happened? Did you ever see Daigo throw up in the bathroom? Anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that well, actually, it was actually very very recent. It was after E League. Um, I was actually chilling at the, the hotel bar with um, 
lots of the players there. And the the Japanese translator that works with Daigo quite, you know, usually works with Daigo was there. And Daigo was at the bar and Dogura and a few other players. And I actually managed to get a lot of um, insight. If I was just speaking to Daigo via the translator, then Takedo came down and they were literally just saying, you know, Daigo was just giving me lots of um, advice and telling me about him as a player and, you know, things that he's not happy with. Like, he wasn't happy that he lost the smug. You know, he's like, he hates boxer, you know, and he was just literally saying, you know, giving me lots of advice about how I need to come out of my comfort zone and play in bigger, big tournaments in Asia and stuff like that and just need to push yourself. When I lose, Europe loses. I shouldn't take losing casually. Lots of stuff. So I had a really in-depth with it and then he just got like really drunk and then just, just, uh, just dancing about, just like, <laughs> just there. Uh, so uh, it was, I've never, I've never had the opportunity because I don't speak Japanese. I've never had the opportunity to speak to uh, the Japanese players and get their insight, not just on the game, but just on their personalities. And you really get to interact with them as people, but because of the translator being there, and Daigo drinking, so he was just happy to talk forever. Um, that, that was a really good uh, experience. I was like, oh, I've never seen this side to, uh, especially Daigo. I was like, I've never seen this side to him before. Drug Daigo is the best. He should be drunk all the time. Then he'll, you know, I might actually get a chance to beat him in the tournament for one. <laughs> and, yeah, but that was a really good uh, moment. Because I'd never really have that. You never really get to. When you go to events, most people who go to events will know you don't really get time to sit down and talk to these guys because it's so busy. So um, that was good. Um, but in terms of crazy story, I tell you, like I'm not really. When I go to tournaments, because I'm just trying to get the job done. I'm not. You, you don't really catch me too much. Like mm-hmm. I chill out with the guys and that. But this game, I'm Street Fighter Four, maybe, but I wasn't. If I was like where I sort of I'm in the scene now in Street Fighter Four, maybe I would have had a lot more interactions. This game, you, it's so <laughs> this game is so stressful. You don't <laughs> even have time to have fun sometimes. You're just like, oh, what is going? You just keep practicing. Everyone just practices for this game. You're just like, I need to play this. I've got this guy next. I need to play this matchup. One thing I would say in Street Fighter Four, people were more relaxed. You'd get a lot more money matches. You people have a lot more fun. People had a lot more like, look, I've got this this tech or whatnot. On this game, everyone is on tilt 24-7. <laughs> when you go to tournaments for this game, I said, no one wants to money match you. They're like, oh, who'd you go? Oh, you play Abigail? I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm telling you, everyone's just like, I, it's best of three. I need to, if I've got this one set up, I don't want to show anyone because I need to get through to the next round. Like, no one, everyone's on tilt. You speak to anyone at events now, they're very nice people, but I'm telling you, when it comes to tournament, until they're out, when they're out, after the yeah, give them an hour so the salt passes and they're nice <laughs> but when you speak to speak to anyone go to tournament speak to them like the day of their pool before they've played or just the night before everyone's just scared everyone's, just, everyone's still, no one's even being themselves everyone's actually scared this game I've never seen anything like it wait like, everyone's scared Problem. So I, I, really have many stories for this. I gotta I gotta I gotta back you up to your previous story you have to tell me what Dr- what kind of dance drunk Daigo does? You have to give me that visual. Uh, like, well, it's just like you see, people put clips on Twitter. <laughs> That's true. There is, like, there are some clips. I don't know if you've seen the sleeping Daigo video. It's very good. But I, I just want to hear it from. I want to hear it from the the problem X player cam perspective. <laughs> like, I don't really. It's hard. I can't really d- d- describe. Like, he's just. When I say even like, he's just very, very merry and just like, like he's very um laughs and he's very interactive he's like i think he's like um i think he's um yeah you can tell he's just genuinely having fun he actually he actually reminds me of it doesn't look like he's there for what we're there for like it's like if you look at even other people have finished and they're chilling out they still look stressed it's like the salt is ever, never ending in this game. <laughs> like but with him he's genuinely happy because you know, may, might be partially because he plays Guile as well, so that always takes his stress <laughs> away. But um, he's just like, I'm just like, you know, this guy just actually doesn't care. Like you can tell, he just doesn't care. He's like, he's just very friendly, very funny, like very natural. Like it's very natural. It's not even. It's like he's been happy for the whole day. It's one of the like for the, the whole event. Other people like you kind of they kind of wind down, so you can tell that they're um 
like I don't know it's hard to explain I can't really describe I can't you just have to kind of see for yourself I can't really describe but like you can get the aura that this guy is in carefree world he's just not not bothered about what is going on you know just not doesn't really he cares but he's not stressed that's the, what I'm getting getting across Street Fighter yeah. 5 events the players are so stressed it's like so to be around him chilling out Takedo as well Takedo won so he was you know chill all the Japanese players are very very chill um, but because I can't really speak to them so that was a good experience so I'm only getting a little insight of what I think the characters are like you know I'm maybe completely incorrect but from what I've seen with uh, all the other players that I, you know, English speaking or that I can communicate with, what was different from that moment and them is no one even like, it, yeah, just going to go to a Street Fighter Five premiere event, right, where people need points and speak to China and see how everyone interacts the day before pools. And you know what I mean? It's just, it's just tense. Even when like, even sometimes me, sometimes before I won, got my points or whatever, I was like, straight, like someone could be, mom, you know, my mum might, you know, message for about asking a simple query and it's be like a quick one word answer, you know, it's be like, oh, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm just about to play. Like, so the game gets you stressed. I was never like that on Street Fighter 4. Like, but yeah, that's just basically, I don't really have that many stories because I'm just focused on this game. Every point matters. There's no chill down time. Maybe now I might have a, a bit more chill down time at events. But nobody else will, so there's no, there'll be no one to, there just won't be those stories on this game. I, you can ask anybody else. I don't know if you ask anyone. They might tell you something about Street Fighter Four, mm -hmm. but Street Fighter Five. I don't think no one really. I don't see it any. Anyway. I don't see like these. No one has time for like, to create an amazing moment. It's just stress. It's like some Hunger Games shit, honestly. That game, <laughs> as, soon, as soon as you were like, everyone's just like, no, I just, I was reminded of that scene where they're all practicing with weapons, mm -hmm. you know? And they're like, yo, you want a duel? No, nah, man. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. take you out when we're out there, man. I'll take you Can't out. Can't show you my bone arrow tech. Yeah, yeah I'll show you the shit. <laughs> I want to ask yeah. you some, uh, some forward looking stuff before Colin uh, takes us out of this room. Um, and I want to ask you, the, the first thing I want to ask you, it's, this is a left field one because that's nothing to do with anything we talked about before. But I, I want to know personally who, what character you want to see added in season four. And I'm, I just don't want, I, I don't want, I don't want Seth. But if you want to say Seth, please say Seth. <laughs> uh, I would like Seth in the game, but I want, I want Viper. That's what I want. I want Viper because I know Viper will destroy Guile. So <laughs> I want, I want Viper. I don't, think, I think Seth will fight Guile, but. I just, want, I just want someone who completely destroys Guile. That's what I want. So Viper, because in the last game, Viper was good against him, and I could play her. So I want Viper, because she's cool. And I, I need to see Evil Ryu. They keep tempting it in the trailer, <laughs> but it just never arrives. Um, Evil Ryu and Gotetsu, the master of Goken and Akuma. I'd like to see him somehow come into the game. That'd, That'd be, be cool. amazing. Was... Yeah. A, uh, evil, evil Ryu, if he gets added, is once again like Capcom killed Ryu around 2011 when Evil Ryu came out, and he's just never been in a Street Fighter game since. But just Ryu is just not existent. So Evil Ryu yeah. would be Evil Ryu would be nice because I would like to play, you know, a Ryu. A Ryu. Well, season one Ryu was ridiculous on this. He game. was broken, but I think it. Yeah, he was yeah. definitely really, really good. And then he went away again. Um, back to wherever, <laughs> wherever Ryu's go when Wait. Capcom has decided they've had their turn. They get, they get back out on the road, right? To find yeah. their next challenge. Exactly. Training in the uh, mountains and shit, you know, looking at their fist, yeah. making metaphors about it. And the, the last thing I want to ask is, uh, you were, you know, we talked before how, like, you know, you hadn't played Tokido pretty much, like, you had one match against him. I want to ask you if, there, if there's anybody, now that you're, you are 100% guaranteed locked in for Capcom Cup, is there anybody you really want to get a chance to play against there? Maybe somebody you really like playing against or somebody you don't get enough chances to? I want, a, I want my run back with Daigo. I wasn't happy with what happened at Ely. I got destroyed and didn't get a look in, so mm -hmm. not happy with that. I need some redemption. All right. That's who I, that's who I, who I um, want to play. And I'm also, I haven't really played um, a lot of the Asian players just in general. Mm -hmm. Like a few of these boxers as well. I'd be interested to play. Just, a, just a, on a comparison to to Smug, I believe Smug's the best boxer in the world. But I've just never, I never play any other boxer in like with it like say four four and Gaffro. I, I see them on the streams, mm -hmm. but I've never they don't even go to. I don't see them at the tournaments too much. I've never ever played another boxer player 
in like professional player in tournament than Smug. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to play the others. Just uh, that's just an interest of mine. Well, there it is. <laughs> if you uh, play boxer, your name is Daigo. Your your time is your days are numbered. Your time is limited. <laughs> uh, problem as as we wind down here, I just want to give give the floor to you one last time and and um, let you either give any shout outs you want to give or bring up something that we never prompted you on. And basically, just a chance for for any last words before we wrap up. Yeah, I just like to say you know everybody uh, stay enthusiastic and keep trying to you know pursue your dreams of of esports especially fgc if that's where it's at but i would recommend you know taking the the steps you will get there eventually i believe if you have the right passion and motivation and skill level which can always be increased um big shout out to my sponsors now sports who made all of this possible um to my friends and family who support me to my girlfriend who supports me and also um what was really sick about Evo is I won the top eight with Bison in the Bison stage. And whenever he, whenever I picked Bison, he came out the chair. So it was almost like the final boss is fighting for the whole top eight. So I found that really cool. So I didn't get my speech at Evo, but I got my stage. So yeah, that was good. That's pretty sick. That's awesome, dude. Wise words and motivational words from Problem X. Benjamin, once again, thank you so much for making time for the Scory Sports Podcast. It's been a serious pleasure. No worries. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good one, man. Take care. Bye. Yes, bye. Wow, guys. Well, I Ooh. cannot get the uh, vision of Daigo drunkenly dancing out of my I'm, head. I'm surprised you've never seen the Sleeping Daigo video. It's it's FG, It's have. like old FGC legend. It's like... Sleeping, it's, but da- I'm thinking okay, dancing, but, but this right? It's still really good. There are some da- Dancing Daigo videos, though. Okay. If you want to see some good dancing videos, you should look at Dancing Ryan Hart, because Ryan Hart can actually dance. Really? And he is... It's cool. It's great. I actually did not know you that. Should, I will send you some video. We got, you've got some video knowledge, some some boning up to do. I do. I do. I have to get a download on this shit. It's weird, because as soon as I start working here, Dan was like, you got to watch the Sleeping Daigo video. Yeah, no, like day one. I yeah, make sure that... I'm, I, I'm, I let it lapse, I guess, for you, because I really should give you this, this Sleeping was Daigo it, video. Was, was that the Justin... Did Justin Wong film that? No, 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 no. That was filmed by some dudes. I believe it was an Evo. The uh, there is you're thinking of the Justin Wong is free video, oh, right, which yeah. is also a drunk Daigo. Okay, of course I've seen that. Yeah, right. We I need... will say that Daigo is a, is a great dude. Having personally interacted with him in a, in a limited capacity, yeah, Daigo is yeah. a wonderful dude. I once told him where the washroom was at Canada Cup. Oh man, that story. He was uh, he he was playing Hearthstone. <laughs> oh so shit! These wild stories. Oh shit! Um, Esports after dark with Daigo. Was, t- I will say that Daigo was caught playing card games uh, on stream at in Hong Kong this weekend. So uh, watch out for caught f- caught on his phone during a during a set. What? Not while he was playing. Well, I think Fudo was playing. Oh. Um, was uh, was caught playing. I think Shadowverse. I don't know. Listen. Okay. The point is, uh, the future of the FGC is competitive card games, and y'all can catch me uh, try it on my Dark Magician. I mean, Daigo is a pretty good Mahjong player when he took that. Yeah, that break. That break. Well, I don't know why we're talking Mahjong, so much about Daigo. I was about to say about Problem X. I, I did. I did want to say we just need uh, an FGC dancing supercut. With those included, and then also Tokido doing the Running Man with Maniac playing in the background, maybe <laughs> something like that. But, uh, but, but but back to the current Evo champion, Problem X. Uh, really, I'm sure I speak for you guys when I say really enjoyed speaking with him. Yeah, yeah. really insightful. What what came across to me personally, just really quickly, was the same thing that came across to me when I watched him play in the in the out of game moments, not necessarily the Bison play, but which is a, a, a humbleness, sort of a down-to-earthness. He seemed very much, you know, his feet's on the ground. He's a humble dude. He's doing what he needs to do. No, nothing grandiose, nothing exaggerated. Very reasonable gentleman. It's 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 the kind of stories that I feel like you only really get from from fighting games in, in esports. These people who did bring themselves up up by their own bootstraps. And I think, you know, the, I don't know. I get the sense that he's a guy who, who recognized that he earned his way here. And listen, he his his play is fucking awesome enough to, to make it matter to make to make to make him get there. Hell yeah! And, and even though we didn't really get a lot of feedback on the F, the esports versus FGC thing, and I actually really like Promex's answer to to clarify. But yeah, um, even though we didn't go too in depth on that i think when you look at at the premier tournaments for this game and other fighting games it's pretty clear to me at least that fighting games have retained what makes them special 
Yeah. That, that that's how that's how at least how I view it. I, I think that the the just the outside opinion is like people worry that it, it's it's you know going to t- detract from that that people coming in right. and trying to profit too much off of that. I I personally don't think we're there yet, but I definitely understand people understand people's like trepidation about it. Yeah. But sure. but but I and, and I agree with Prom that I think a really good way to to start pushing against that is you know increase the amount of points you get from a ranking tournament, make it so that a, a you know a player who isn't sponsored can like get enough points that maybe they make it to a regional which maybe gets them to capcom cup like just give us more things that let the you know player who isn't daigo problem x justin wong like those guys make it so that the the, the, the guys like two or three tiers below them can still make it count right the, the, the distinction between pro and amateur is a lot blurrier in Street Fighter yes. in any fighting game than it is in, in League of Legends and Dota, right? Like, right. I, I do understand where people are coming from, but I, I, I think Problem X's answer was great, right? Like, at the end of the day, Capcom, they need, pe- they need pros to be at these premieres because they need people to watch them because they need to make money. Like that. That's just the. That's just. You know, we don't get more Street Fighters if the Pro Tour doesn't like doesn't do what it does. Absolutely. And speaking of watching uh, more Pro Tour events, we'll definitely have our eye, just like everybody else, on Problem X. Yep. And uh, hopefully, he can win that Capcom Cup and repeat Evo next year. The the. I mean, the triple crown is if you can do E League. Uh, it oh. used to be Red Bull Kumite, but now it's E League, Capcom Cup, and Evo in one year. The only person who got close, I believe, was Infiltration, mm-hmm. who won Kumite and Evo. Or maybe, yeah, Kumite and Evo, but he didn't win Capcom Cup that year. Mm-hmm. Um, but nobody's ever done it. So if you can win all three of those in a row. Oh, shit. All right. Well, that's the next step. And for us, that's all she wrote. Thank you so much for listening to the Scory Sports Podcast. Thank you very much to our guest, uh, Benjamin Simon, Problem X. And uh, for Josh, for Dan, this is Colin saying we'll see you next time. GG.